Now that we've got a finished piece that we're very happy with and we're sure that we've got all the changes and edits made that we're going to make, it's time to varnish. I've got a basic uh, chip brush from Home Depot. It's pre-moistened. I used to buy expensive varnish brushes, but I ruined too many of them. And so now I'm down to the basic chip brush. I keep it very clean with soap and water when I'm done. And I never use it for anything but varnish. I don't paint with it so it doesn't have any color trapped in it. And when it gets worn out, I get a new one. So if it starts to drop bristles, I get a new one because they're not that expensive. I've got golden satin varnish. Um, I put it in a container. I set it out into a Tupperware container because I buy it by the gallon. So I put it in a small manageable container for my studio and I dilute it with water. The people at Golden suggest you dilute your varnish with 20 to 40 percent of water and I find that sometimes I have to dilute it with more than that because it's very hot in Florida and the varnish tends to coagulate a little bit uh, the longer it sits around and I have to add a little more water. Basically you want it to be the consistency of heavy cream when you're spreading it. You don't want it to be really thick and you don't want it to be too too watery. And I'm diluting it with water because it's golden. Please read the directions on the back of the varnish brand that you have on hand hand in your studio because I know that Liquitex does not suggest diluting and I'm not sure about other brands so always read the directions on your product but being a golden girl I have golden and I am diluting it about 20 percent 30 percent with water and that's not a um that's not a uh precisely measured thing I just pour a little of this and a little of that kind of like cooking so anyway okay so my brush is already wet I'm going to slowly stir it into the varnish. I do not want to infuse any bubbles. So you never want to shake the varnish or rigorously swirl your brush around in it because bubbles are the enemy of varnish. So everything we do, we do slow and steady. We don't use a foam brush and we don't brush rigorously because we want no bubbles. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the art and hold it sort of at an angle to the light so that I can see where I have spread the varnish and where I have not because now I've got a shine to it. So I'm going to gently brush across the surface making sure that I cover the whole surface and making sure that I don't infuse any bubbles slowly in one direction. And this is going to seal our painted area and our collaged area so that they all are protected this varnish has UV light stabilization in it, so it's protected from UV, and it's also protected if it were to get dust on it. It could be wiped off with a damp cloth. And the other benefit is that now all of the piece will have the same sheen. So where we put thousands of layers of glue will not be any more shiny than the paint that we dripped in the background. So it's all gonna have an even sheen. So I'm gonna inspect it for bubbles. Make sure there are no bubbles. If there are, I'm gonna would gently brush them out. Typically in my studio, I put a fan that circulates room temperature air on it. You never wanna dry it with a hair dryer or a heat gun. You wanna let it dry at room temperature or in front of an air conditioning unit. And it's gonna dry for several hours before we put a second coat of varnish on it. I say use two coats. Um, I think that's enough because varnish is self-leveling. So if you use too much varnish, it's gonna fill in all your low areas and you're gonna lose that beautiful textural surface that you have. It's gonna feel more like it's under glass because of the varnish filling in all the low points. So stay with two coats of a golden or your preferred brand UVLS varnish. Spread with a brush very slow. Don't infuse any bubbles. And then our next step is to sign it.